This is going to be a really short story since it was my first time playing and only lasted a few minutes. I was in middle school and extremely shy. Unfortunately for me, that made me attract a certain type of guy. I became friends with a few of those really nerdy guys and one was really interested in me for some reason. One day he was explaining D&D to me and I expressed I'd like to play it, but probably wouldn't be good at it because of my indecisiveness. He decided he wanted me to give it a try anyway and set up a FaceTime call with a few of his friends for later. I barely knew anything about the game back then, so I didn't really notice any red flags about what was about to happen. When I joined the call, he asked me what my character was. I said, an elf. He didn't make me elaborate at all, which I was happy about, but obviously that isn't a good thing. Then he got distracted and was talking to his friends about random things for about 15 minutes before we even began playing. I would say it's weird that he doesn't even ask you for a class. But the first D&D video game I ever played just had you play as an elf. Nothing else, so it makes sense. <laughs> when it's time to play, he says, A boulder is crashing down the hill towards you. What do you do? There's nothing else. Just jumping right in with no backstory, there's no setting, character explanations, there's or literally anything. I was obviously very naive and said, I don't know. He said to make something up, so I asked him if I got options. He got annoyed at this and tried to tell him this is why I didn't want to play, because I was scared to do something wrong. We went back and forth until he gave me choices and I picked one. He rolled for me, but I don't remember the outcome. All I remember after this was that he just kept talking to me, asking questions, his other two friends just going on their own thing, not even unmuted. <laughs> I didn't want to make decisions. He was becoming increasingly aggressive until I just started crying and he rage quit. <laughs> Knowing now what I know about D&D, I don't know if you could call what we did D&D. <laughs> I mean... Okay, the undead are closing in around you. What are you guys doing? Just go without me, okay? You're gonna die with me if you stay. Are you crazy? There's zombies everywhere. You're down two death saving throws. We die together, all right? We made a bond. Look, my character made their choice, all right? It's over, man. Just get out of here. I'm sorry, but you've got to make a decision. All right. I disengage and take my full movement speed to hell at the door. I'm sorry, man. Okay. Ava, gotta roll a death save. Hello? Hello? There's like a rock falling on you. What do you do? What, what are you doing, anyway? Sorry, I was just thinking about what I was hoping D&D would be like. What's wrong with the D&D you have now? Well, I mean, I'm not really doing anything. Well, there's a rock falling on you, you know? I mean, I'm not giving you anything to work with. Oh, are you kidding me? The part's so unsight readable. Like, seriously, who designed this level? That is okay. so stupid. Unbelievable. Like, I think we'll go back to fantasizing about what D&D should be like. It really put me off my game. It's been a few years now, and I haven't played, but I'd like to. Just don't know how to start. P.S. That guy turned out to be a real creep later on to me and my friends and always jumped straight into anger when he didn't get what he wanted. If what he wanted was a terrible D&D game, well, he got exactly what he wanted. I would analyze this longer, but I won't go back to playing the final shape, so let's get the horror stories over with so I can go play my video game, please. my friend. It should be noted I was 14 at the time the story happened and the problem player was about 40? Dang, how'd that happen? Well, then again, when I was a kid playing World of Warcraft, I played with people in their 40s all the time. Yeah, hey guys, let's go kill the Lich King! So glad you guys let me join. Yeah, kid, you're, play with you're doing great. I think, I think my voice Can is annoying. I don't know why, though. <sighs> Guess I'm a hypocrite. Anyway, names change for the cast. The story consists of Sid and Ike. Sid was a bard. I can't remember what class Ike was, but Sid was the problem player, so it doesn't matter. So, this wasn't the worst story ever, but it affected me significantly, as it was my first time ever DMing. The party's level 1 at this point. Before the game even started, Sid said, Are you ready for us to derail your campaign? He also complained that we're using point by for some reason. So to start out, the world was an underbaked homebrew setting in which the party would arrive together in a town that was fully fleshed out. 
When we started, Sid asked what there was in the town. Then, when I stated there was a tavern, the town square, and a group of older adventurers were within view, I kind of railroaded the party after they didn't seem to want to engage with any of the things in the town. So I had the priest of the setting come and guide them to a portal. On the other side, there was a dungeon, and the priest wanted them to clear it out and get something from the person who owned the dungeon. That's where the problems start. When they get through the portal, Sid says he wants to beat up the priest. You know, if you're gonna kill anyone first, kill the healer. No one ever does that. I allow him to beat up the priest, despite the priest being capable of killing him very easily. Deathly afraid of my first ever party ending up in a TPK. So I allow him to continue. He rolls high to restrain and tie up the priest. He then strips him down to his under- I don't like where this is going. Stop, please. I- uh, Not knowing what to do about that, I, I just, just let him do it. He asked what loot the now tied up priest had. I rolled a d20 and gave him like 14 gold. Sid then decides that wasn't nearly enough and complains, saying that wasn't realistic. For one of the only times when I played with Sid, I stood my ground here. I said that the priest wasn't corrupt and he donated any money he did not personally need. Sid kind of huffed and quiet down. Can you imagine the scene in the game? Wait, so you're actually just a nice lady who helps other people? Yes, I have donated so much to the poor. Well, shit! Damn it! Come on! That, that, that what wrong? You? What wait, money? wait, what do you want to do to me? We continue on. They eventually find a glass window that, when broken, will deal damage to anything close, then reform the glass. Sid complains that he can't jump through it in the one second the glass takes to go back into position. Okay, whatever. They continue on, some silly things happen, and we're all actually having a decent time for about 45 minutes. They then enter the next room. In this room was a homebrew monster. They weren't supposed to fight this creature, but Sid insisted. So they restrained it with a net, cut off one of its wings, and threw it down a hole. They used the time it took for it to fly back up to come up with a plan. Sid says he wants to splash oil on it and set it on fire. He has the ability to do so, but because I didn't have rules for oil fire, I decided at the end of Sid's turn, for 1d6 rounds, it would take 1d4 fire damage. Which, by the way, I think that damage is more than fair, but I guess this guy's one of those dudes who thinks D&D is better off being balanced by the mind of a freaking 12 year old. <clears throat> Sorry. I let the elitist out of his cage again. <laughs> Sid is unreasonably upset about the damage. He insists that it should instantly die. I just try to ignore his complaining, but it really got to me. I thought we were having a good time, but he said something about me not being a good dungeon master. At that point, I should have just stood up and said, I refuse to DM for this guy. But alas, I was still sure I could turn this around. And Ike looked like he was having fun. I'm also really good friends with Ike, and I didn't want to end his fun. So we continue. In the very next room, they come across a humanoid creature incapable of speech. It gestures towards the table with some simple items and a healing potion. Under each item is text saying the cost is like five gold. Sid decides he wants a health potion and reaches for it. The creature then slaps his hand away. He draws his sword. The creature panics and gestures that they aren't hostile and point to the price again. We go through this exact same thing three times before Ike Floud says, I think he's selling them, not giving them. <laughs> Dude is literally Zagreus, like from Hades. You know that bit in the game where you can steal from Charon and get tons of gold that's just lying around? Hey, free money. Whoops. And then Charon tries to murder you. <laughs> Yeah, that bit, that's this guy. Except, I have a feeling he's not gonna get murdered. That sucks! I don't remember how the session ended, but I do know we end up running out of time. I didn't get to my ending point because of the constant bickering from Sid. I never played with him again. All good in the end, though. I have a party of four good players now, and they seem rather invested in my second homebrew world. With best regards, a beginner dungeon master. Do you all know why this happened, in my opinion? Sid is 40, and you are 14. I'm not saying that you can't play with somebody who's older than you. Far from it. I mean, it's totally possible. But as a kid, I had countless horror stories of people who treated me like absolute garbage just because I was a squeaker. And in D&D, I bet it's no different. 
Sid probably thought he could walk all over you, get whatever he wanted, and enforce the way he plays upon you. To him, you were just a kid. You weren't an equal. When you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, though, that's not how it works. You do need to act as equals. Now, of course, you're probably not taking an equal amount of work, but in terms of respect, you should all be treating each other with respect, regardless of age. Now, of course, that can be difficult if there's a big age gap. I mean, I'm not saying that every 14-year-old is some genius, but if you're going to play in a group with big age gaps, you got to overlook that, and you got to treat people like people. Not like this. Been playing for about 10 years now, and something I've realized from watching your video is how lucky I've been. I've always been with the same small group who first taught me to play. It's at a game store, so the people come and go, new players especially, but we have a core group of three. Dungeon Master, another guy, and me, a woman. All of us in our late 30s and early 40s at this point. It's a very relaxed table about laughing and having a good time. We always operated by unspoken rules until the following incident, after which things got a lot more standardized. But you know, things I always thought didn't need to be said. You have full control over your character, no railroading, fade to black for romance and sex, no killing each other in PvP, and no making people uncomfortable or being offensive, etc. Basically, just play nice and act like adults. But of course, we've seen time and time again, especially in your videos, this is expecting a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, okay, like, can we set the bar a little bit higher though? Like, instead of the bar being at bedrock, let's put it at like diamond level. Oh my god, I actually found that. Sound good? Does anyone else? Everyone plays Minecraft, right? <laughs> We ran into a that guy a couple years ago. He came in at the start of the campaign and everything seemed alright for the first couple of sessions. However, things started quickly going downhill. As mentioned before, I'm a woman and I'm often the only woman. This was the case this time around and has never been a problem before. And as a bit of a side, I don't particularly like putting a label on myself and I don't necessarily identify as asexual, but I don't date and don't have any interest in romantic slash sexual relationships IRL. I do, however, enjoy doing the tasteful D&D romances and those crazy BG3 romance. Okay, do you, want, do you want my hot take? Baldur's Gate 3 is romance light. Like seriously, people writing about this being the horniest RPG ever seem less sexually experienced than I am a literal asexual. I mean, Mass Effect was no joke and Cyberpunk has full uncensored first person sex scenes and they're not short either. Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't even get close. So no, I don't think Baldur's Gate 3 romances are that crazy. If anything, I think they're kind of lightweight. Not saying they're bad, of course. Shadowheart. For me, those romances are just a little fun aside. And then, that guy had a difficult time with the difference between player and character. I was doing a silly little heartbreaker romance with this DMPC barkeep. I was a chaotic neutral rogue. Our party was flirting in and out of the town. Oh, flitting <laughs> in and out of the town. Sorry, the romance discussion got me real messed up. We were flitting in and out of the town every time we were in town, and myself, the dungeon master, and two other players at the table were getting all kinds of laughs at how I got the poor DMPC's hopes up every time I came through, only to stomp all over him when I left. Except that guy was getting angrier and angrier that I wasn't romancing one of the other player characters. I just kept laughing it off because I don't like creating conflict. I felt like confronting him wasn't a good idea, but Dungeon Master had had enough of his attitude and basically said, Look, she's been a part of the group for a long time. She doesn't really romance other player characters. She likes to stick with silly romance side plots with DMPCs, aka just shut up. That guy got all in the huff over this and said something along the lines of, well, since we have an actual woman at the table, she should be romancing one of us. Millions of D&D players struggle with a lack of romance, with the feeling that no one will ever love them. And honestly, they're probably right. But there's always hope. Hi, I'm a salesman. And today, I'm here to introduce you to our new catch-all solution to all marriage problems at your D&D game. Introducing woman. The simple solution to all romance. With woman, every romance in your D&D game is guaranteed, as woman is innately forced to romance any man during your game. Simply ask woman out, and woman will respond with rigorous enthusiasm. I say you'd better start looking for your hey, true love. Wrong clip! Wrong freaking clip!
<laughs> um, yes, this is a complete and total solution to any romance issues. As you can see, woman is enthusiastic. Hey, that's another woman that she's romancing. Wrong clip! Uh, anyway, if you are a man at a tabletop game and are looking for the perfect romantic partner, simply buy a woman for $99.99 a month. Uh, roll the thing. Woman is guaranteed to work 100% of the time, 40% of the time. There are no refunds. I was getting ready to scream at him, so I was just taking a little moment to collect myself and gather my thoughts and say something polite and well thought out. Meanwhile, apparently Dungeon Master had enough and just told him, she is, she's romancing my character. At that point, that guy asked DM, so... <laughs> I was mortified just because like, I love DM like family <laughs> and I would never want to make him uncomfortable. I mean, you know, if you love him like family, in some places that's not a problem. I'd like to add this point, DM is married with two kids. So there was the whole implication that he was cheating on his wife, who was the sweetest woman. But DM just took it in stride, blessed the man, basically dragged that guy out of the store by the back of his shirt, while that guy continued to make his argument that it was my womanly duty to romance one of the men's PCs. Like I mentioned, we've made a more formal list of player rules since the incident, but honestly, I'm wondering if we need to add to it. Like, including a no essay clause. What the heck is wrong with people out there? Watching your videos have opened my eyes to things that happen at other people's tables. I feel lucky the worst I've come to is one sexist a-hole. In all of my games, there's a section of the Discord reserved for just a little paragraph text entry saying the contents that will be and will not be in my games. If you guys want to look at it, you can take a look at it. I find that large, massive forms that take 10 to 20 to fill out, they can dissuade players, but a simple, short, informational docket that says, hey, this will be in the game. Hey, this won't be. Text me if you have any questions or concerns. I think that that is more than enough. Of course, my games aren't exactly the most crazy thing out there. I run pretty light. So for me, the amount of stuff I had to clarify is relatively low. There is still some stuff I definitely need to clarify. For example, Tenth Tomb has heavy themes of trauma and a lot of gore and body horror. That might not be cool with some people. Thankfully, it's cool with my players, but I know because I asked. Also, that kind of stuff is good for fleshing guys like this out. These type of people usually have a friggin' aneurysm if they see the words safety and tool anywhere close together. So, you know, if you have that in your Discord, it baits them nice and quick. Hi, Crispy. Been listening to your stories for a few weeks now. Thank you, by the way. And just wanted to share something that happened at a table I was at sometime uh, last year. I still play with this group from time to time, and the person in question can also be a murder hobo and steals everything in sight and is rude to every NPC we meet. But despite that, we still manage to have a lot of fun, and enough of us tend to overrule him. <laughs> Dude, D&D is not a court case. You shouldn't need to overrule your fellow players. <laughs> anyway, cast is me, the dungeon master, the warlock, the cleric, the ranger, and problem player, the fighter. We'd been finishing up our fight on a pirate ship with undead pirates to get to a new island. Fighter came across a magical orb. He removed it and it lit up. The ship stopped moving and the undead pirates all died. Cool. Next session, we come across a magical gate that will not open no matter what we try to do. The dungeon master explains the power feels dark and evil. We look around the outskirts of the island we're on, and me, ranger, and fighter come across a man crying over his dead wife. However, when the orb is close to her, she comes back to life and explains she was killed by dark magic. We meet up with cleric and warlock and tell them what happened, and warlock asks to look at the orb to see if she knows what it is, and that she and cleric had found an alcove in the gate that the orb would fit in. That if she's correct, she believes the orb could dispel the dark magic locking the gate. Except Fighter tells her no, it's his. I back Warlock up and tell him she's the best person to look at it as she knows what it might do. Still, he doesn't want to hand it over because it's his, looking at us over the table with a smug smile. He says that he found it, it's his trophy, and he doesn't care what it does. Just kill it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, killing party members is bad, but you know, sometimes it's not, right? Warlock does cast a spell on Fighter to force him to hand it over and got a nat 20. Fighter fails the saving throw and the Dungeon Master says that Fighter is now compelled to hand it over. 
Fighter asks if there's any way he could still refuse, and Ranger even mediates in-game and will make sure that as soon as Warlock is done with the friggin' orb, he'll make sure she hands it right back. Fighter now says that he's gonna smash it on the ground? Okay, seriously, kill him. DM hurries to make him do an Arcana check, and he rolls high and is told he can sense bad things will happen if he smashes the orb. Well, I mean, that was definitely gonna smash the freaking. Sometimes orb. foreshadowing is relatively obvious. Fighter insists he still wants to smash the orb, so he body slams the thing into the ground. Needless to say, we all got badly injured as it smashes. Dark magic is released in the area. Fighter was left with no orb, and the game had to end early because, of course, the orb had to be used on the gate. None of us had anything to combat it or get into the gate any other way, and the DM had to figure out another way around so we can get inside. Moral of the story? D&D is about working collaboratively. There's a point where you can't just do what your character would do, when it literally means there will be no game if you don't bend that moral compass just a little. Yeah, your fighter sucks. <laughs> I understand that when you're playing with friends, you can kind of overlook some of these issues, but I think this fighter is a big problem player at the game. Is it the worst thing ever? No, but that smug attitude of, I want to ruin things on purpose. It sucks. We saw this in the first story we covered. The guy who joined the game with the express purpose of derailing it. I hate crap like that. Look, going off the rails is all fun and dandy. Doing crazy wacky things is cool, but it should be to support everyone else at the group as well. Both the dungeon master and the other players. Your wacky antics shouldn't be 100% selfish. This guy's just screwing around, and I really wanted him to find out. <sighs> I guess we can all get what we want. Hey, that's a wrap. If you guys enjoyed, then you might enjoy our latest episode of D&D Advice. It's going to be on a bi-weekly schedule because of our actual play, but we still got plenty of stuff up there. It's linked in the cards. But before you go, please do leave a like on this one. Let me know if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to Crispy's Tavern to get more of our content. Rise it comes out. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down in the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment mean girl so let me know you made it to the end of the video by the way if you have your own horror stories you can send them directly to us there's an email down in the description down below send your stories our way for a chance to be featured in one of these videos but hey even if you don't have any stories send us a like comment subscribe i'll see you all next time farewell <laughs>